What's up, niggas? It's Dame. Welcome to Musician Talks, episode 13. <clears throat> and today, I want to talk to you guys. Hold on real quick, let me get situated. There we go. I can barely hear myself. Alright, <clears throat> I want to talk to you guys today about messaging as an artist. <clears throat> and what that means, what it is, how you can use it as an artist. And I want to talk to you guys about what a message looks like for an artist and just to kick things off let's start from the beginning be sure to share like subscribe and support this channel by following me on youtube you can join this conversation directly like as i'm talking right now on facebook live i do this every day from 9 to 11 in between that window uh, except for wednesdays so if you want to be a part of the conversation live, you can uh, join my Facebook group, Dame Smith Productions. Or if you just want to leave a comment, I'll be um, editing this video and uploading it to YouTube later the same day. And that way you can just jump on YouTube, leave a comment, share. There's a link and everything. But um, messaging as an artist, what is it? How do you use it? And what is the benefit to even having a message in your artwork or in your work in general? So what is it? Um, messaging is simply just providing either information, awareness, or enlightenment to whoever it is that's going to consume the medium that you have as an artist. And the obvious ones are music and paintings, where You'll see musicians put, you know, heavy handed messages in their music that are typically current events or uh, something that people typically aren't aware of in in mass or in general. And then the other form is visual messaging where you'll get a uh, graffiti as the big one where artists from all over will leave messages in the streets or on the, the pavement and things like that. And other forms could be like. I would say group messaging where you'll see a group of artists come together for one cause to put a message that they stand unified and whatever it is that they're standing for. And that's what it is. But why is this important? And typically, why do you see artists take this role? Well, the obvious reason is um, the exploitation of art is super easy. If you think about it, it's a highly consumed product that doesn't get if it makes sense consumed after use so if i were to put a message in a song similar to a book it can be replayed over and over and over again and re-experienced and shared and reiterated and changed or whatever and that is super powerful for an artist who does have a message that they want to get out there now the issue with that as an artist is, as I've speak, spoken about in previous episodes, some artists don't feel this responsibility in their artwork. They may feel it personally, but as far as even putting it into their works and their products, some artists don't feel that that is right or don't feel that that is, um, what's the word, an obligation. And those that don't typically have to work this balancing act of people seeing them for who they are and people receiving them for what they give them. And that can be tough for some people because it's not necessarily a, a transactional relationship. It's kind of a, uh, emotional relationship with, with that type of artist. Because for example, if you're an artist who's been putting out music for a long time without any, current event or political or emotional messaging that's you know personalized to perhaps the it's not so general your message your general your message has a bit of nuance to it if that's not typically your mo as a creative when we get this personal information from you be it like uh social media posts or 
maybe you go on an interview and you explain how you feel about these certain topics or certain current events and things like that. For those that have never seen that side of you as an artist and only have a relationship with your works, that can be divisive for the audience. And what that means is you've kind of excluded the human aspect to your artwork, which is an okay thing to do because this is not like the music industry isn't really built on you being a great person. It's built on what you can give to the industry. So if what you've been doing has been working and now we get to see how you feel about, say, us as an audience or, you know, whatever political events is going on and the audience that consumes your artwork doesn't agree with you that can be something to deal with that can clash with what you want as an artist and then on the other hand there are artists who have messages i would say there's three parts to this there's other on the other hand there's artists who typically put messaging all through their music from the beginning and the messaging doesn't have to be heavy handed. It can just be a nod to something, maybe just bring awareness to something or to kind of shine light on something. It doesn't necessarily have to address an issue or a political or a, not political, but a current event head on. But to see an artist do that consistently in their works leaves a lot of leeway when that person gets to speak from their uh human perspective not their artistic so what that means is if this same artist was in an interview or doing a social media post and they were giving their opinion on something people would be a little more receptive to it because they already know what to expect from that opinion whereas if it's just a surprise or you just completely don't agree with it and have never you know, known this person to believe that that can be a little more jarring than somebody you've kind of expected to have certain opinions. Now, on the third hand, there are artists who do way too much messaging in their music that you don't know who they are. And honestly, they can't explain who they are either, if that makes sense. So there's artists who put so much heavy handed messaging in their music that when it is time for them to talk about themselves and how they feel about an issue and how they have personalized what's happening in them, what they've experienced in the world, that's very hard for them to articulate because they don't have the perspective of a person that's experiencing something that they personally feel a way about. Their messaging is based on uh, not emotion, almost not fact, but just that they see a problem or they see what they think is a problem and they're putting it in music and putting it in paintings and things like that. So then when it is time to explain, well, you know, somebody could ask you, what's the solution to a problem? Or, uh, what would you like to change about the world? And this artist can't explain that because they don't have a message for themselves. They've just been plastering pander pan, pandering and propaganda just for different you know avenues for people to have awareness or light on things but for them as an individual they can't identify with any of the things they're providing messages about i've seen this done in hip-hop you'll see it done a lot in um pop music and especially um the theatrical industry like they do it a lot with actors where You'll have an actor portray a character for most of their career, but then when it's time for them to give their perspective on current events or whatever it is they feel about the world, it's kind of shocking that they can't articulate anything out their mouth. But that's a real thing because, like I said before, some artists don't see this as a responsibility. It's just a thing to do. It's just another act to perform. And on the other hand, artists feel full responsibility for the messaging that they put in their works. And then on the other hand, the third hand, as I say, they, um, some artists, I mean, some artists either see the responsibility, some artists do see the responsibility and some artists see the responsibility, but don't know how to have and take the responsibility of messaging in their artwork. So the messaging can be cluttered and not clear at all. Now, why is it 
beneficial for artists to have a message and why would it not be what would make it beneficial as i've explained earlier is that your personal identity is kind of interwoven into the works that you have so if you do receive questions or you know um yeah just questions about your opinion on certain things this can either have people gravitate to you in in order to you know experience somebody who has a similar perspective as, as them or it can gravitate people towards you who are okay with people having different opinions but want to learn more and perhaps maybe receive more information about something they they themselves may think differently and then on the other hand you can have um the negative effects of having a message in your music where people oftentimes you'll hear they don't like to intertwine what they would call politics into their uh, day to day life, which is fine. And that can be hard for a musician or an artist in general, even if you're like a painter or things like that, because you may uh, feel and have an opinion about something that you cannot express because of the possibility of, uh, alienating somebody or just, you know, your fan base in general. And that can be hard for some. And I've noticed that a lot with, uh, younger musicians who, you know, they start to develop their, their perspective on the world, but knowing that if they were to share it, it would be very different from the people who actually consume their works and can cause a problem within their career. Now, how do you manage that? How do you take care of that as an artist in handle it with care so to speak the best way i've seen was to either never give your opinion on things just keep it purely business transactional like if you you know go on social media just don't talk about those things if somebody brings that up in an interview don't speak on it but just as i said before that can be kind of detrimental because people want sometimes to hear your opinion on things as an artist i'll explain why later but and then on the other hand the way i've seen it handled well before was not to have a uh, perspective on everything that you want to change in the world but when you are speaking in public meaning addressing the public the audience your fans and things like that to have a consistent message that's a good way to do it <clears throat> and that consistency excuse me, helps with people understanding what they're going to get from you as a person, along with, you know, artistically. Artistically, they're expecting what they've always been getting. But as a person, now they can see that, okay, this person believes this, and they want this to be their, uh, they want this, whatever idea it is, to be the change that they want to see in the world. Now, the audience has the power to say, well, do I agree with this? Do I fuck with this? Or don't I? And then if I do or don't, would I still, you know, appreciate, appreciate this artist's work? And that's where the balancing act as an artist comes into play. Now, why do we even look for artists, artists for these um, messages and opinions and things like that? instead of the people that it's directly affecting. For example, if it's a natural disaster happening, why don't we ask the scientists and teachers and scholars of the world to speak out louder? Why do we turn to musicians to speak about natural disasters? Why do we look to artists, entertainers, and things like that to speak to political issues in the world? Well, the thinking behind it is that People are more likely to listen to somebody who has the power versus people tending to listen to the person who has the intellect. Now, that may not sound right, but it's what happens. And I can give you many examples of it happening, but I want to keep it general just so we can actually have a conversation on the phenomena and not specific people so an artist like an a-list artist can 
garner the attention of hundreds of thousands of people at a time. Whereas a scholar, let's say an A-list scholar, one that, you know, travels and does seminars and speaks to people around the world, can probably garner a percentage of what that A-list artist can pull as far as attention. So if there's an issue that needs to have awareness brought to it, oftentimes the awareness comes from popularity and not necessarily the intellect to deal with the issue. So if an issue comes along that's like natural disasters, as I've explained before, but you turn to a musician to bring awareness, the odds of you getting awareness to the hundreds of thousands of people that that artist can touch versus the scholar that has, you know, individually trying to done, trying to do the work of basically millions, it doesn't make sense to do that. So that is why most people are attracted to artists, celebrities, and musicians when it's time to talk about political issues or current events and things like that. But <clears throat> what I also wanted to point out was, well, has it been working? What are the results that you get from that? And Again, this is the balancing act of uh, being an artist and a human coming and rearing its ugly head yet again, because if there is an issue and we understand that artists and celebrities, especially in America, have more notoriety, therefore power in terms of bringing awareness to something, um, how can we either expect or dictate how that artist is going to facilitate that that real message to the people that they are uh, attracting. And that's where the gamble comes. So <laughs> if you have a message and you want to team up with an artist, how do you know the artist you're teaming up with will take responsibility for that message? And how do you know this artist won't um, how do you know this artist believes in the perspective you're providing for them to bring awareness to a hundred percent? That's very hard to do and very hard to determine, especially when it comes to how these artists do get these messages out. Now, typically these messages are not organic. <clears throat> there's, <clears throat> there's politics behind it, meaning that if a certain message comes out from a certain group of people, just like I explained with an artist having a message, that can uh, put a detriment on what they are trying to do. We've seen it done plenty of times where a message comes out, another group receives it incorrectly, the message gets uh, misconstrued, and now you have artists and celebrities either backtracking, changing, or trying to basically convince people that what they said is what they said it was, if that makes sense. But the problem with that comes along with how do you even determine if an artist can handle that kind of responsibility? I personally don't have the answer to that, but the best way you can do it is to build trust with, with an artist. Now, I've, I've noticed artists who have had consistent messages and things like that. But they're not the ones that we gravitate towards in terms of awareness for the very reason I've explained earlier is that they're just not as popular. But for those that are popular, that means that they must attract a general type of person, not necessarily a specific type of person. Therefore, their power comes in uh, quantity, not quality. So now you have another plate to spin where you have the artist you want to spread your message for awareness. That's one plate, just picking an artist. And another plate would be, does this artist believe what you're saying? And will they take responsibility for what you're saying and asking or requesting of them to spread awareness? Then on the third plate, um, how will this message be received? And, that again comes back to taking responsibility and is this artist even the right artist so those three plates right there are essentially what you're looking at when you're seeing why we pick artists celebrities and entertainers to speak on real life issues for 
the general masses. So another thing to also recognize is that messaging in artistry typically only works with consistency because there's going to be, uh, I would call it counter messaging in a sense. Whereas if I tell you the sky is blue, someone out there will tell you the sky is another color, which one's correct. Right. And it's not necessarily of two ideologies duking it out. And the last one left is the correct one. Cause that's not how that works. So the consistency comes in the works the consistency comes in the the clarity of the message message and the uh, consistency comes in in the form of are people understanding what you're saying? If people are often confused or often addressing issues with your message, your message is not clear, no matter how you think you're portraying it and your message is not being understood, <laughs> no matter how clear you think you're you're saying it. And that's that can be a struggle for many artists because, again, as I've spoken before in previous episodes, artists are <clears throat> typically emotional, but kind of sporadic in their thinking. To be creative means you have to be able to be inspired instantaneously, and oftentimes you lose inspiration instantaneously. So. For something to be an issue for you that you want to put in the work to change, you almost have to dedicate a portion of your lifetime to it. And again, as an artist, that can that can be uh, taxing because you want to make art. You don't want to. I mean, typically you don't want to, you know, help change the world. You just want to make your music or make your paintings and dance or things like that. But that's only the artistic side of you. The human side of you understands and emotionally understands that the world needs help. And you have you have labor to give to the world. So with that, many artists struggle, struggle <clears throat> with that concept. So think about that the next time you're listening to anything. Like just to keep it in a music sense, you can extrapolate this even outside of art artistry but the next time you're listening to the radio or the next time you're going through your streaming site on your phone just looking for new music or even go back to your favorites try to think about the artist as a creative and a human and what are they trying to get you to understand and really think about it like to the point to where you're kind of auditing your own thinking so if you're listening to an artist, like your favorite artist consistently, what have you gotten from that artist? And along with what have you gotten, what is that artist trying to give you? And from my experience personally, if you feel that <clears throat> you've gotten nothing from an artist, meaning it's just sounds for you to enjoy, you have the power to say, well, that's all I want. That's fine. That's okay. Or you can turn around and say, wow, <clears throat> if it gives me nothing, does it benefit me? Maybe I should stop supporting this or maybe request more from that artist. That's very fair of you as a fan. Yeah. And on the other hand, not the other hand, but also what, um, what does this artist want to give to you? And a lot of times, especially in America, because we're kind of capital, well, we are, we're capitalistic. A lot of people don't care about what you want to give them as long as they get what they want from you, if that makes sense. So to ask you as a listener to think about what the artists that you support want you to get from their works is difficult for some fans to step outside of <clears throat> their thinking wheelhouse and actually ask themselves. So if I support this artist or if I have been supporting, cause some people have been listening to similar artists for over 10 plus years and to understand that, you know, music sound and vibrations and how they work. That's a lot of information to be consuming over a long time, especially consistently. Some people listen to the same albums or the same songs, not necessarily the same person. So they're the growth of the artist may not be received versus just what little portion 
<clears throat> what little portion of messaging the artist has put out. That's all some people have been consuming for a long time in their lives. And have never and they have never thought what was this little portion of this artist's life supposed to give me and, and so forth, you know. So that can be very hard for, for fans to, to kind of deal with because <clears throat> you might come to the realization that hmm, maybe my favorite artist is not beneficial to me or is not helping me for, for what I need. And that can just be something as simple as a mindset. Like I like to listen, to, <clears throat> personally, I like to listen to artists that are motivating, not necessarily clean artists, but kind of like, you know, transparent and motivating artists. And for me, I get to see how various people think in that kind of way. That's what I get from that. And for those artists, <clears throat> excuse me, for those artists, I go into how, like I look into rather, like I look for interviews or articles or even out, you know, hit them on social media and ask them, what is it that you wanted to give in these certain projects or certain songs and certain verses and singles or whatever. And if it's something that I never knew, <clears throat> if it's something that I never knew was beneficial, that's amazing and awesome. But sometimes you you can hear an artist say, I didn't have anything in there for you. So whatever you got from it was something that, you know, was probably there, but I never planned for it to be there, which is also awesome. <laughs> Then on the other hand, there's artists who make music and they don't actually support the things that they're putting in the music. They are uh, kind of lackadaisical in terms of um, substance with their music. Like it's just a series of just sounds and words and things and that just to make you dance. That's, that's all it is. It's all it is. And that's fine. That's fine, too, especially if that's what you're looking for. So then as a fan, you got to think, well, is this messaging benefiting me some people do need a break from reality some people when they're going to work on that commute they don't really want to have to think about anything they just <laughs> want to relax and that's what that does for them and that can be the very beneficial thing you need from an artist i personally just think it's important for artists and fans to identify those things i, I don't i think it's very dangerous for either parties to just facilitate messaging or receive messaging without actually uh, understanding the substance of messages because you'll get situations where a large group of people will understand a message and they'll kind of react to it or move to it or adapt to it and they won't necessarily notice it's kind of like when you realize you're addicted or you realize you've you know gained weight or something like that it's it's a slow creep and it feels good when it when it happens. It's not necessarily something that, you know, you can see coming unless you have the self-awareness to keep auditing the messages and things like that. And so as you do that, it's kind of like a muscle. So as you do that, you'll notice the more music you listen to over time, especially as you mature, you're starting to critique and you're starting to, to fine tune your tastes in a bit and see what it is you want you're kind of eating the meat and spitting out the bones as it say as they say when it comes to the artwork and the artists that you support and it gets that much easier to find uh beneficial messaging uh beneficial artwork higher quality messaging some messages are super super poignant but they're delivered incorrectly you know so to be able to understand that and to filter through the, the, the artists that you know aren't delivering the thing that you're looking for because you might not want that thing that everybody else is doing right now but to be able to fine-tune and find that thing is so much more healthier for people <clears throat> when they're consuming art <clears throat> and excuse me <clears throat> and as well as uh creating art so when you're creating art it makes so much more sense to be like you know what in this one this album or song or whatever i don't want to be too heavy on current events or political issues or just how I personally feel. I just want to make a dance song or, you know, a fun song. And you can willfully do that versus thinking you're putting a message in a song and it's being portrayed poorly and it just becomes a dance song where you think you slipped in um, <clears throat> medicine in the candy and you didn't. You just made candy. 
it's something to really, really think about and work on. <clears throat> so my suggestion to artists would be to take a look at artists who have taken a stand on certain issues that you may not necessarily agree with and see how they do it and see how they've um, garnered results. Not necessarily see how they've been successful because that's not a good um it's not a good frame to look at, to, to understand messaging. Oftentimes, very successful uh, artists and entertainers or whatever can put out a message and it be poorly received and it, nothing happens to them. So it, that's not a good frame to look at. The best way to look at it is when an artist puts out a message, was it received? Was it received well or properly? Um, what changes came from that? Did anything change? Did it affect the artist personally? That's important. And yeah, and I think that that would be about it. Anything else outside of that would be something that you, you know, personally feel. I know for a fact, some people don't like to take information from people that haven't experienced the, the information they're giving. That can be a double edged sword, but it is a thing that people believe. So if that's important to you, then you should check that about um, artists you support or artists you may not support because you may you may have more in common with people that you don't know. I know for a fact in the um, the Latin hip hop community, there's a lot of similarities in their industry or their their section of the industry to the American section of the industry. But the clashes come in with a cultural barrier like there's just different languages different cultures and things like that but there's a lot of similarities when it comes to how they're performing and creating hip-hop as we do over here too so <clears throat> to be able to bridge <clears throat> to be able to bridge that gap <clears throat> to be able to bridge that gap takes a lot of maturity for fan bases and artists to look bigger than you know the selfish ideals that i'm this so this is what's good or I'm this over here, and this is what's good. The both of you could be supporting very similar ideologies, but you won't know that if you're not looking for what it is you're, uh, what it is you're communicating to the audiences, and what it is the audiences are getting from what you're communicating to them. And so, that's all I have today, and. That was episode 13. Uh, got you. Episode 13 on uh, Musician Talks with Dame Smith. Like I said, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and share this with anybody who is an artist, becoming an artist, wants to be an artist, or just you got artist friends and you want to share this conversation. And like I said, this will be edited from Facebook Live and uploaded the same day. I'm here every day except for Wednesdays. All right. Peace out.